Hi, I'm Randy Reed, editor of the Edison Report, and this is Lightfast. Today, I'm joined by Kurt Wilcox, the Vice President of Research and Development for Creed Lighting. Kurt, welcome, and let's jump right in here. Two of the most misunderstood terms in our industry, glare and visual comfort. Tell our audience a little bit about those two issues. Great, yeah, I, uh, I definitely have some experience with that. I, I design many products with uh, HID and fluorescent sources uh, used both in indoor and outdoor applications. Um, yeah, honestly, the focus of the feedback we received uh, was typically on application layout numbers. Some outdoor jobs use the old uh, cutoff classification system as a spec. Everyone remembers the cutoff, semi-cutoff, non-cutoff world. Um, you know, NIS reports did provide a luminance calculation which I saw used occasionally in indoor specifications, that typically was not helpful to differentiate, you know, two different products in an application experience. Um, you know, my personal interest in improving visual comfort, um, as well as, you know, using the specific terms, illuminance intensity and color uniformity, really was peaked with an HID optic I designed early in my career. Uh, that optic was class leading uh, for layouts uh, in the US and really, we don't receive positive feedback from installations. Um, we used it in Europe, and we started receiving some negative feedback. And that really was uh, involved uh, the intensity non-uniformity on the ground. Um, you know, when I corrected this issue, I realized that you know, I really could address so many more aspects to the lit environment beyond just numbers in the layout. Do you feel that the industry has sufficiently responded to standards regarding visual comfort? There has been a steady push in the last 10 years uh, to make more meaningful metrics beyond some very specific ones uh, used in roadway lighting. Um, in some ways, I think a lot of this work is in response to those early LED fixtures. Some of them were noticeably different and often less comfortable to the average person uh, when they saw them. Uh, there is good work uh, to drive scientifically based recommendations uh, through the IES DGON committee. Um, but those really have not yielded any you know, accepted standards yet. Uh, and DGON is an acronym for disability glare and outdoor nighttime environments. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, industry has kind of coalesced around some recommendations, uh, such as the uh, combined IES dark sky five principles for responsible outdoor lighting. Um, that's you know, been presented at several committees, SALC and, and, and others. Uh, and uh, changes to standards uh, such as you know, parking lot illuminance uniformity recommendations have increased from 15 to 1 to 20 to 1 in the last two RP8 updates. Um, I, I'd say the trend of all these updates is to encourage people to consider comfort and experience, not only safety you know, from their lighting. Okay, so this is a great point. So given that the metrics are starting to catch up, how has that changed fixture design in the industry? Something that struck me early um, <clears throat> was that LEDs were going to allow designs not possible with previous technology. And I think we all know that HID gave us those shoebox area lights that became the standard and fluorescent gave us you know, the omnipresent troughers. Um, you know, LEDs allowed us to change the relationship between the physical light source and the observed source with uh, far fewer penalties in size, efficiency, and optical control. Uh, this has led to many great new products in the industry during this transition. It's one of my favorites um, that I was involved with was our IG parking structure fixture. You know, the optic only needed to be about a half an inch tall to achieve the layout goals, but we designed it to match the luminance of a T8 lamp so that it would be comfortable to view from any distance in that environment. And that drove the optic to be about five inches tall. Are there more widely adopted solutions for improved visual comfort? Yeah, I think the industry trend of mid-power packages generally supports improved visual comfort. Um, more sources that are lower intensity are typically better for comfort. Um, you know, a modularized approach can be beneficial for product line breadth, consistency, and system costs. Um, there have been industry efforts on standardization through Zaga specifications targeting both sources and optics. Uh, a common outdoor component used is the Zaga 4x4 optic module standard. We have evaluated that standard, but did not adopt it for our products. Are you okay with what Zaga is doing or do you find anything lacking in their uh, standards? I think directionally, um, you know, having standards and um, you know, having building blocks available for use is a great thing, right? It can help, help a lot of people develop faster. 
you know, we have many internal uh, design metrics that are developed through the years after building and refining generations of products. These include uh, the typical application layout performance targets, as well as both luminance and illuminance intensity and color uniformity requirements. This is kind of how we translate visual comfort in a quality lit environment to specific targets an engineer can then go optimize. You know, the Zaga standard gains support in Europe first, um, and most of their outdoor design targets are physically smaller, narrower roads, lower pole heights. Um, when we went and looked at our application layouts that represent kind of the North American infrastructure, and then also laid in our standards for visual comfort metrics, you know, we couldn't meet those goals with the constraints of that platform. Um, you know, that analysis led us to develop our new nano comfort technology platform. Okay, so explain to me and our audience what is nano comfort and how is it different than other products out there? Sure. Um, you know, nano comfort may sound familiar as it kind of builds on the foundational nano optics technology and patents from all of our first LED products. Um, kind of the first thing is nano comfort optic is about 50% larger than the Zaga standard. And that's so that we have enough optical power to achieve both our application and visual comfort goals. Uh, we also increase the packing density of those optical elements to present a more uniform visual field. And, and the most important uh, aspect really are the facets that we design into the optics. And these facets further break up the observed visual source, you know, that LED roughly about another dozen more times. This decreases the intensity kind of another order of magnitude as well as spreads that source over a larger, more uniform area. Um, you know, the other benefit that we gain from those facets is we're actually correcting kind of an inherent shortcoming in the mid-power LEDs, which is the color angle uniformity. We, you know, get that to have, to blend that to, to get a much more uniform lit, lit source on the ground. And we also improve the intensity uniformity through those features as well. Okay, understood. That sounds pretty, pretty darn exciting. As we wrap up here, explain a little bit about how users and designers can ensure they're getting good visual comfort uh, in their in their designs. Yeah, I think the industry recommendations mentioned earlier are a great starting point. You know, however, they can't be the ending point. Um, quantifying visual comfort and a quality environment it cannot be reduced to a spec sheet, application layout, or even a higher resolution rendering. Yet. You know, the impact of IES data being far field photometry, um, as well as the color data not being incorporated in that file, means that you just don't have the information to make accurate comparisons. Um, yeah, I'd recommend what sounds easy, but just get a sample and test it in an installation until you're familiar with a particular you know, specific product and know that it meets its needs and you know how it's going to work. You know, I still carry that lesson that I learned earlier in my career, you know, doing things better may be more work, but they don't have to cost more. Um, you know, one word that kind of describes that principle is craftsmanship. You know, and I appreciate that in all aspects of life. You know, the effort to produce better than expected results is kind of one way to pay back our industry and contribute positively for the benefit, benefit of everyone who interacts with our lighting. Kurt, how far along are you with nano comfort? Is it something that's new that you're launching or is it across the board in many of your outdoor products? We launched the product about a year ago. Uh, and it is fully available in our entire outdoor platform. We have an area light, wall pack, um, you know, floodlights, as well as a really cool bollard we just launched as well that even has a rotational optic so that you can bend the light around you know, complicated or curved paths. Um, additionally, we did launch last year uh, at Salk the uh, guideway streetlight fixture. So we can get those same benefits of visual comfort into, I would say, an area which is often overlooked you know, those residential street lights where you, there is a lot of interaction with pedestrians walking down the street um, as well, where there is a benefit to, to to caring about that lit environment. So, Okay. Well, Kurt, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much for the education today.